Well, yes, without further ado, okay, please give it up once more for a truly unique voice in the American independent underground scene. Creator of the word cockroach, please turn up for Scooter McRae. Questions. What do I want to remember, and what's the message? <laughs> and, uh, the, the message of this film is that total n n nihilism just uh, pays off. Um, no, that's really not quite it, is it? Um, I, you know, look, I would just like someone to walk away thinking, yeah, we live in a godless universe. Uh, life is hell. Uh, everything is painful. And uh, at the end of the day, you just go to sleep and wake up and just keep doing it until you get dealt the card. You know what I mean? That's it. Life's not so bad, but uh, you just gotta learn to enjoy the painful stuff. And uh, when the pleasure hits, you just go, "Shit, that's good." You know. So I would, I would say those are the things you come out of it with. Um, but uh, in terms of images, I'd like someone to come out of it thinking, "Gee, it's really good to be able to see." You know, it's dark, it's grainy, it's disgusting. This is how I've tried to make all the stuff. That, the stuff that's really personal to me is I feel like when you go to see a movie, I feel like it should be a bit of a struggle to watch a little bit. Because, you know, your own vision, your own experience of going around just seeing things, it's just too easy. Things are dealt to you, you know. A light comes on in a room, you see every fucking little detail, every little thing. I think when you go to see a movie, there should be a, uh, you should work towards it. You should really have to work to see what's going on sometimes. And I think this is a, a perfect example for me. I'm very happy with the way this looks. It's dark, dingy, disgusting, grainy. And it doesn't even go far enough for me. So visually, I, I wish it was even skeevier looking, for lack of a better word. Did I answer that? Or did I just go on? It was more like about what, what was the story behind it? Like, oh, I have no fucking clue what this film's about. <laughs> no, I mean, seriously, I, I uh, it was, it's, 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 um, as, as film, as, as a project goes for me, uh, it was very emotional, very personal. I, I was talking to Alex about this earlier today. I know part of it was my own reaction to living in the, uh, uh Giuliani, New York, to some extent. And I was just so furious about this fucking piece of shit coming in and closing down 42nd Street and cleaning everything up. I was like, who the fuck are you? And of course, what does this guy do? He's some Catholic piece of scum who ends up divorcing his wife. And it's like, you know what? If you left the jerk-off parlors open, you'd still be married instead of going off and like, what, you're Catholic, you're not even allowed to get divorced, right? So I was really pissed off about that whole thing. And then 9-11 happened, not to get too political here. And I was thinking to myself, as I was saying to Alex earlier, which, uh, said, so here's a guy who destroyed New York, and I think part of what his deal was, I think he was really upset about 9-11 because they did more damage in an hour than he was able to do in all his years in office. I, uh, I really hate the fucking guy. But I give him credit at the same time as that when, when, uh, when uh, not to belittle or make fun of that incident, which is simply that when the time came, he showed a lot of backbone, he showed some dignity, and it was very impressive. But people should not forget that until that time hit, when 9-11 came in and kind of did what it did to New York, which was terrible, up until that point, the man was just a shambling piece of shit. And I just don't want that forgotten. And I think that was part of the inspiration here. Uh, you know, I know it sounds weird, but I just, I hate Disney, I, I hate corporations. You know, it's a corporate sex hotel as an environment, and, and I just, I love hotels, by the way. I, I love staying here, but um, as, uh, the idea of corporatizing sexuality really bothered me also. And I uh, felt like that's what was happening in New York at the time. All right, I'm here at Fantasia, and it's a confusing swirl of magical entertainment. Uh, how do you think the screening went? I think it went great. I it was a great screening. We uh, had 165 people, a few empty seats, not many at all. I didn't even see them, but I know the theater holds 172, 175. But it looked like we just about filled it up. And we had 13 walkouts, which was great. I almost hoped for more. And um, I, mean, I felt good about it. You know, when you watch it, and the second you watch your project on screen for the first time with a whole room full of people, 
it's like the super ultimate bullshit meter kicks in, so you, you do it at home all the time. I know you were going through the same thing, where you watch and you go, this maybe works, that maybe works. When you're sitting in the theater with all these people, there's no maybes in there. For the first time you sit there and you kind of go, okay, that worked. Oh boy, it didn't work at all. So there's no maybes. It's amazing how it just kind of hits you like a bolt of lightning or a concrete cinder block in the back of the head. So I know that we come out of that and we're going to make some changes. We're going to tweak the audio a little bit on a couple of things. And uh, that's probably the biggest thing will change. I know we're talking about adding one or two voiceover bits there to clear things up. But just adding a sound effect here and there and just overall tightening that up, making a few things more obvious is going to be a big thing. Stuff we were kind of talking about before, but we were kind of like, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. But again, like I said, all maybes just went out the window.